the new Netflix docuseries is called Heart of Invictus. It's an inside look at the Invictus Games that you know was created by Prince Harry. The purpose to help injured veterans and service members recover through adaptive sports. Now, the series profiles competitors from all around the world as they prepare for last year's games in the Netherlands, including American rower, remember this guy, Gabe George. He also competed as an archer and a swimmer. In 2008, while serving in the Navy, George was hit by a car during an off-duty motorcycle ride. He was left with a traumatic brain injury, spinal damage, and paralyzed right arm, which later required amputation. He has been through a lot. In this clip, he explains why the Invictus Games mean so much to him. I remember when I first heard about Invictus, I really saw it as a great opportunity to really get me fired up and a great opportunity to keep me going. My grandma tells me that I stretch myself too thin. My friends tell me that I need to take breaks. People tell me all the time that I, I need to slow down. But whatever the outcome is, I've been doing this for most of my life, and now I'm in The Hague. All right, we got to get this done. We are very happy to say that Gabe, join, Gabe George joins us now in the studio. I was so excited to meet you because this documentary is so powerful and I was so moved by your story, Gabe. Thank you. But let's that. pick it up right there when you come and you're in The Hague. What did that mean to you just getting there, mm -hmm. being there? Getting there was already a life-changing experience. Like, it was a wait that we've been waiting for for multiple years because COVID slowed us down to keeping there. And, but this experience that we've been held, had in our hearts and minds preparing for, it was phenomenal. Like, mm -hmm. it was nothing that I could have thought that it was going to be once we finally got there. But let's talk about you, Gabe, because you, we were talking about your pain level. You said out of, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's a 7 at all times. Mm -hmm. Someone told you it's like being in labor but never delivering the baby. Right. That pain is just a way of life for you, but you just accept it because that's what it is for you. That's but right. it also fuels you. Definitely. It's... So when I got in a motorcycle accident, I remember when I woke up in the hospital and after they told me everything was going on to me, when they transferred me to the rehab bed that day, I remember the first time I felt the pain in my arm, not knowing that it was going to be there for the rest of my life. Yeah. And you go through all these different times and trials, people telling you, oh, it'll get better, you're trying different things, you're trying surgery, you're trying everything. And once you get to that point where you realize, okay, it's still here and I'm tired of being cut on and poked on, trying things, and I have a daughter that's watching everything that I do, I have yes. to find a purpose so I can live without that. Yeah, because at one point you said you actually considered taking your life to end the pain. Well, but you didn't do that. It's been talked to me about end time because people that have been around me personally, they've noticed that if you sit with me and watch me for a while, you can actually see it. And people don't like watching somebody else in pain. No, they and don't. And you've tried other mm -hmm. things. If everybody offers you drugs. Everybody's like, try this, try the pain. And I have to remind them, like, you can numb the pain, but if you numb the pain, you're numbing the pleasure too. And so mm -hmm. that's something I wanted to avoid. And here I am. I, I love living so much that yeah. I found other alternatives to live without doing that. That was powerful. Numb the mm -hmm. pain, you numb the pleasure too. Um, you talked about it a little bit. Take us back to 2008, April. You are leaving Bible study. Correct. You're mm -hmm. on your motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And what happens next? I have no recollection of what happened. Mm -hmm. I remember the day I woke up in the hospital was the day somebody told me that I was actually in an accident. I remember earlier that day, I went to work, had a normal regular day. I worked in the OR as anesthesia tech at the time. And I remember leaving work, going to, uh, meeting the friends of my mom to give her some CDs before right. I head to Bible study. And I don't remember getting to church, don't remember leaving. I just know what everyone's told me after it. Gabe, I can only imagine leaving Bible study and having questions that any human would have. Definitely. Talking to God, uh -huh. saying, why me? Mm -hmm. So when did it go from why me to, okay, what's next? <sighs> well, I love that question too, because I've had a lot of time sitting in bed in pain, sitting in the house by myself in pain. And it wasn't a never a question of why me? Because oh. I, I was already a believer. I was always, like I said, I was, a member. I was very active. I loved helping, volunteering people. So my life has always been, to me, I tell people, my life is a testimony. It's, it's another story mm -hmm. that keeps growing and growing. So when this happened to me, it was like, okay, this, this is something next. Right. The, the conversation I did have, I would pray. I said, like, you know what? If this is, the pain is going to be there, this is going to be my thorn in my side, I'm going to live with it. I'll take it. All right, God, whatever you want to use it for, here I am. Mm. Yeah. Didn't know that that was going to lead me to here to this day, but yeah. Right. No, wow. you said, Gabe, even your losses are your wins. Definitely. I, I was very moved by that. I mean, you've, you've survived sexual assault. Mm -hmm. You've had a rough childhood with your parents. Mm -hmm. You said one of your goals is to be a better parent. Your daughter, to me, is here 14. Definitely. One of your goals is to be a better there parent to her. There she is right there, her. Gail. There she is. Hi, Tamia. <laughs> to be a better... Hello. <laughs> to be a better parent to her than your parents were to you. Definitely. So how did the games help you in that way, in terms of being a better person, being a better parent? 
As far as the games wise on how to help, it was like, because I've always had that in my mindset, like as you mentioned, since I was in elementary, of saying that about being a better parent to my yes. And from my daughter's mom was pregnant with her when I got in an accident. So her being born, mm -hmm. it was like, all right, I had this here watching me for everything that I do. So I had no choice but to pick up my straps or whatever, my boot, lace my boots and keep going. I'm right. changing diapers one handed while I'm in pain, chasing her little butt mm. around. <laughs> so I'm having to raise that. And like adding on to the, my losses or wins is, my upbringing may have not been so pleasant and wonderful, but it taught me how to do the things that I wanted to do, or how, mm -hmm. what not to do. Right. All I had to do was take that and remember those things all the time. Yeah. That I felt like I wanted somebody to be there for me and just do it for my child. Yeah. Uh, and just doing that has strong. given me strength. One, yeah. of the, one of the interesting things about the Invictus Games is they don't use the word athlete to describe the participants. They yeah. use the word competitor, and you're, mm. you're definitely a competitor. That, that word <laughs> applies. Uh, I'm actually interested in the, in the founder of the Invictus Games, Prince mm -hmm. Harry, who you went scuba diving with in Maui. It's part, yeah, it was a happy <laughs> memory, right? Uh, as part of this docuseries. Series. <laughs> you say knowing him uh, is like having a, a brother. Uh, tell us something about the prince that we may not know or that doesn't always line up with the things you could see in some of the tabloids or the headlines. Well, when I mentioned about like well, talking with him was about like talking to a brother of mine. It's because he's a human being. Just as like have a conversation with y'all here, this is what I expected. It wasn't ever a moment where he looked down upon me or made me feel like, oh, well, somehow I was lesser than me. Like, the Invictus Games, if by him coming and witnessing and putting on this event, gives us all the connection. It connects like he, him being a veteran, excuse me, also. But yeah. mm -hmm. as a face, but someone that has a heart and soul to be willing to put on a, a, or participate to make something like this happen. Yeah. This, the Invictus Games isn't about Harry. It's yeah. about us. It's about the wounded, the ill, the service men and women. But if, it's bigger than us. It's about our families that are coming to watch us recover and mm -hmm. show that we still have that spark in our lives. And that's what mm -hmm. I loved about it. And, going to the Invictus Games and seeing the families that came out to support, the kids running around, the, the activities, and hearing their testimonies and seeing, oh, look, my daddy, look, my mommy. Yes, cheering them up. Uh, like. But what we know about Harry is that he deeply cares about this. Definitely. Yeah. Because he's been through trauma himself, which he has talked about very candidly. But he said, you know, when, when something like this happens, it's not just happens to you, it happens to the whole family. It is Completely. a whole family situation, is yeah. it not? Yes, indeed. Like, and, for my own instance, like, with me being injured and my daughter being born, now I had to go through trials and understanding like if I walk around moping or if I'm in the house all the time and not doing nothing, she's gonna watch everything that I do and yeah. not do anything. If I was feeling down about myself about having a paralyzed arm or feeling like I can't do something, she's gonna be saying, I can't. And I never wanted my child to hear the word. Can't was a word I had in my household. Yes. I don't allow it, it's something we don't do. So, so what do you do now? What do you do now? I, I do. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I like that. For, I for a living, what do you do? Oh, for, for, for do. a living, okay. So, I mean, I'm a retired Navy veteran, of course, mm -hmm. but my love and my passion, what I do the most of, are with this military, this organization here called Military Adapted Court Sports. We teach multiple sport, sports to veterans. Well, I'm looking at your try. socks, I see pickleball. I'm thinking, <laughs> pickleball. Do you do with pickleball? <laughs> pickleball, I'm, of course, is one of the fastest growing sports in America right now, but it's my love. It's my, I'm the pickleball director of this organization. You're a pickleball uh, director? I'm the director oh, of the, okay. I'm the one that brought it. So before it was cool, before everybody was playing it like that. You were doing I was it. in the church. Like, this was my adaptive sports therapy. I was going to oh. one of the local churches in Jacksonville and playing with a bunch of the older folks that people would say, because it, <laughs> it's older Are, are you guys. good? Uh, come, uh, come play. Let's set up. Oh, OK. I, I, I can show about you better than I can yeah. tell you. Ooh, I can show you better than I can tell you. I, I you invite people to, because one, he does. with that, it's a social sport, one. Yeah. Like, and so it's, it's therapeutic because one, it gets me my body moving. It's, I'm not dead after playing for an hour, but then I'm able to enjoy this feeling that I'm having All right, with Gabe. others. We'll take you up on that offer. Game yeah, on. Yeah, I look Game on. That's great, Gabe. All right, thank, thank you, Gabe George. Thank you all very much for having me. Congrats, congrats, congrats. And to Mia too. The Heart of Invictus is streaming right now on Netflix.